Hello everyone and welcome. Starting from this video, I'm recording some videos in English since part of my audience is not, are non-Italian speakers and uh, I really hope they will find it useful. So the idea behind this deck, today's video, today's deck is uh, Green Black Rock. Basically a more aggressive mid-range deck. Uh, it's kind of different compared to other green based mid-range we'd already seen in this format since they were more similar to classic uh, mid-range style deck for example this break black green list by chocotone which uh, got some uh, results on proper leagues and proper challenge basically is a black green pestilence deck they don't have um, very big creatures and they have a lot of removal spells. In my decklist, uh, instead, I'm more focused on mana ramp and bigger creatures. Basically, the reason to play green is Arbor Elf, uh, Utopia Sprawl, Pulse of Raza, and Annoyed Altisar. I got the idea of, of this kind of, of this deck since the Spoiler of Kaldame, Woodland Chasm, and other duo, Snow Covered Dual are basically the most similar thing to the real dual lands, and I think they are great because uh, we can uh, untap it with Arbor Elf, so Arbor Elf can generate black mana in this, guy, in this case, and also we can enchant it with Utopia Pro. Uh, it can be also important to Senses of Swamp for Snuff Out. Mm, we play Snuff Out uh, just because it's a good removal spell, paying zero mana to destroying one creature, generally speaking, is good. And the drawback of losing four lives is not really bad because we also have Full of Raza and Fast Clock. Uh, and against decks like Burn, we can sideboard out it without any problem. <coughs> uh, this deck basically is a mono green deck with a black splash. Uh, I found a really good the recent uh, Ponza decks because uh, Anoid Altisaur and Boarding Party are very good creatures, both for putting pressure on the battlefield and uh, for generate card advantage. In this deck we are more focused on another kind of uh, disruption, not land denial, but uh, removal spells to interact with uh, any kind of uh, uh, aggressive uh, deck or also any other mid-range deck. Mm, I don't play a lot of removal spells because uh, this mid-range is more focused on uh, value with uh, Christopher Gargantua, Saurus Packmate, Lanover Visionary, and Altisaur, and obviously is more focused on Acro. Uh, by the way, I think uh, 9 removal spells is the minimum amount uh, we can play. Playing less than uh, 9 removal spells will be, uh, will be really difficult to interact with uh, other aggressive deck. Uh, Pulse of Muraza is a good against Agro, obviously, but I think uh, is a one of the best reasons to go green uh, when we play uh, a green a mid range deck, basically. Saru's Packmate is another Caldeim card, which I think is very good. Uh, basically, it's a Cabo Climber, uh, 5 mana, 3 3 creatures. It's not really good, Cabo Climber, actually. I tried uh, before Kaldame playing this dude in uh, oops playing this dude in basically in the same shell is wasn't really great but wasn't really, wasn't neither bad because uh it's a good body with a, which can uh, draw another card which is somewhat a set all not good obviously because uh, it doesn't cost uh, for mana like Sarul's Packmate and uh, Sarul's Packmate has also the foretell ability which can be good because we have a somewhat a good amount of tap length uh, but we also have a good amount of uh, mana ramp so in early game turn 2 specifically 
We can uh, play a turn one Arboreal for Utopia Sprawl and a tap land on turn two or cycle Nash Barons and then for Tales of Roof Packmate. Uh, what else I can talk about? Uh, let's talk about the first Via, for, uh, let's talk about first Via Gargantua. I never thought uh, first Via Gargantua was a good creature, but actually it's good. Because uh, we can play it on turn 4 to put a, bot a lot of pressure on the battlefield, basically, like our Gurmag Angler. Also, it's similar to Phyrexian Rager because it buys another card, it draws another card, and it's similar to Mood Drifter. We can uh, trade uh, basically two cards and uh, a removal spells from the opponent for the only this, this card, and I think it's a good rate. And, it costs a lot of mana, that's true, but we also have a lot of mana ramp, so I think uh, it's probably one of the reasons to play this deck specifically. <coughs> uh, the good thing about this deck, I think, is being able to play a more aggressive, uh, a more aggressive game plan compared to other mid range like Boros Monarch. We can play something similar to an aggro bit down game plane, similar to Burst Bully, but we can also play a uh, mid range uh, grindy style um, game plane because uh, we have a good creatures to grind off the opponent uh, and we all also have a good amount of removal spells. Specifically, I think the split uh, three cast down and two snuff out is good to interact with uh, any kind of non black, uh, non burn uh, decks. Uh, General Sedict basically is, an is our only answer to Guardian of the Guild Pact, besides being uh, um, more bigger and more aggressive than uh, any deck with Guardian of the Guild Pact. We also have Pulse of Raza to buy some time. Pulse of Raza is really good against any Boros decks. And Chainer Sedict uh, is a 2 for 1 removal spell, so it's not really bad with uh, a lot of mana. This is also a good answer in early game against uh, any Boros deck uh, if they don't have Travel Inspector on the battlefield or Battle Screech uh, Squadron Oak. Uh, by the way, we can also play another Chainer Sedict in the sideboard. So. I think it's necessary to play at least uh, Fortuner's Edict to interact with Boggles and Guardian of the Guild Pact. The two main deck uh, and two sideboard split, I think that's reasonable. <coughs> I don't play Torn of Black Rose or Entourage of Trust in this deck, but uh, I think uh, one or two main deck copies of the Monarch can be good. I tried playing them, but I found them difficult to to keep the monarch because I don't have a lot of removal spells. If I go with uh, the uh, twelve or more removal spells, obviously turn off any monarch card will be good. But uh, in this kind of deck, is difficult to interact with the swarm decks. I don't play any more suffocating fumes. And I previously played it on the on main deck uh, because I wasn't playing the full set of Ponder's Ornament uh, and I was playing only 20 lands instead of 21. But I think uh, 21 lands uh, is the good amount, uh, is, is the good is a good count and that Ponder's Ornament is too much good to play less than 4. You can play only 3 Ponder's Ornament uh, specifically if you want to play 1 or 2 monarch cards but I somewhat found Bonders Ornament way better because it's also Bana Fixing and the Mana Ramp. I play two copies of Economy Decay because I don't play Suffocating Fumes. Uh, if you go with Suffocating Fumes, you can, you can eventually cut Economy Decay uh, and uh, uh, increase the amount of cards like Cast Down and Snuff Out. But I think uh, two copies of Economy Decay is a good compromise to not play any Suffocating Fumes at all. Because it's good against Swarm attacks like Burst Bully and it's also good against uh, a Single Threat. For example, if you play against Stompy or the Queens uh, or Is It Ferris, it's good Economy Decay just to kill one single Ninja of the Powers or Metal Sentinel, for example. 
basically, the best start for this deck is playing a turn 1 Arbor Elf or Utopia Pro, followed up by a turn 2 Burner Sauron, Metalano or Visionary. So on turn 4, you can eventually cast a First Fear Gargantua or a, a turn 5 uh, Undoid Altisaur. That's a really good and fast start for this deck. It's not often it happens because you can have a slower start with more interaction or just try to grind out uh, any mid-range deck without to go big. Specifically, if you play against uh, a Ferris deck or a Boros Monarch deck, you can eventually, or a Mono Black deck, you can uh, cut uh, some copies of Arbor Elf post side to increase the amount of Ramola spells to interact better with the race. Okay, let's talk about the sideboard, because we have uh, a different approach in different uh, kind of, of uh, matchups. Specifically, I want to talk about the 8 Land and Isle spells in my sideboard. Previously, I didn't play any uh, Land and Isle at all. I was playing uh, Wicker Book Elder to interact with cards like Pestilence or Joint Nowhere. And I was also playing Ukibag and Shinobi and Relic of Progenitus to interact with uh, uh, spells deck like uh, Flicker Tron, Familiars, and Cycle Star, but uh, they are not uh, enough. They're not enough because they just uh, can overcome them. I also found uh, Pretty Larius uh, landing uh, an Oxyb against Shinobi in on turn 3, for example, against uh, Cycle Storm, and then uh, still losing because they discarded two useless cards. And then when I was tapped out, they started coming off and I lo still lose. So basically, I, I lost too many matches too many matches, too many games against uh, Cycle Storm, so I decided to try a different approach. Relic of Progenitus was obviously good against Cycle Storm, but since is a uh, only 9-11 lands deck, I thought, uh, I thought trying uh, Land Denial upon the game plane, which is uh, probably better, because we can uh, destroy their lands, so they can't play anything. And we can also try Weather the Storm, which is probably better than the last Disciple, specifically in this deck, because we are more reactive uh, compared to Ponza. So we, ha we can kill their creatures, uh, we can leave the mana open uh, to kill their creatures in their turn, and then uh, cast Weather the Storm to get more lives. The last Disciple is good, but probably that's not the best deck to play it, because we don't play so many encha uh, enchant lands. So basically, Thermocast and Mooly Acid Moss enters uh, against uh, Flicker Tron, Familiar's Combo, and any other deck which uh, we can't uh, really well interact with uh, our card advantage, or yeah, basically we can't overcome the card advantage, or generally speaking, in their late game. For example, we don't have any Duress effect, we don't have uh, Graveyard 8. Uh, switching to a Ponza game plane seems the most reliable uh, game plane for me. Uh, we can try to go fast, uh, generally speaking, uh, in game one, but it's still a, a really difficult matchup. We don't, have really, they don't really have any interaction besides Nuff Out and Cast Down to stop their flicker effect. Uh, and I think uh, trying to gain, get some temp advantage with uh, a land denial spell, uh, get some mana ramp, cast a first via Gargant or Altisaur, and then uh, and then win the game with a creep rat is probably the best game plan against uh, those uh, uh, those flicker decks. Uh, so I play creep rats, uh, but because it's good against uh, flicker tron. Familiars, but specifically Stalking is better, is really good against the swarm decks like Elves, was Combo, and Boros Bude. It's also good against uh, Stompy and Render Queens, uh, but uh, they're probably um, way easier compared to Elves and Wolves uh, because we can uh, land uh, an Anonymous Altisaur, for example, kill some of their creatures, uh, block their combat step. Uh, and they basically don't have a late game compared to at least us or elves. Uh, Turner's Edict, uh, then I, we can play it against any aggressive deck, any creatures deck. Uh, is 
probably one mm, the, our, our only answer to buckles uh, if we don't want to bird in uh, as thermocast and mobile as it must to trying to uh, to destroy all of their lands, but uh, maybe it's not reliable since we have only eight land and spells. Basically, this side I think that's the best sideboard we can have uh, with uh, this main deck and uh, with uh, without uh, playing any any duress effect or any relic of progenitus. I found this deck uh, somewhat good. I wasn't expecting it to be so good actually uh, i mostly built it for fun and i'm finding it uh, way better than expected i don't really want to play more arc uh, but in this deck but probably i can cut one copy of bonders ornament and one copy of first via gargantua to add two copies of entourage of dress science monarch is a broken mechanic and not playing it in pauper is probably the wrong way to play pauper in 2021 so thank you for watching this video and let's enjoy the next five video gameplays in english eventually you can also go uh, take a watch to the Italian playlist since uh, I'm recording a different uh, playlist for both the Italian and the English because uh, I think uh, having more videos of, of gameplays will be great uh, in any case uh, and you can probably don't need uh, to understand what I say in most cases but just watching probably is fine thank you for watching